Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the XLOOKUP function in Excel. The function to replace VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and the index match combo. We are going to look at a variety of examples of how to use this function and see why you should be excited about XLOOKUP. The XLOOKUP function is awesome, and we are going to look at some great examples of how to use it. Let's begin with a classic lookup scenario. I have a list on the left with some employee IDs, and I want to return the email of those employees from the table on the right. And that is formatted as a table named emails. So in cell B2, I could write my XLOOKUP function and it prompts me for these six arguments. The first three are mandatory, the second three are optional. The very first one is lookup value, that is the employee ID, cell A2. I could then put in my comma so that it prompts for that lookup array. This is where we're looking and that is for an ID so I'm going to select the range of IDs. Now this is a table, so it uses the table structured reference, the table name emails, followed by the column ID. A comma brings me on to return array. I'm then going to select the email column because that's what I want to return. Another comma brings me on to if not found. And this is a feature that was added since my last video. What to do if that ID is not found for some reason. I'm just going to return a blank, an empty string, and the other two options are not necessary right now. So a close bracket enter returns Yoshi, employee 1042, and if I select that and copy it down, I'll then get the emails for the others. And that's great, but hang on, why are we writing our XLOOKUP in that way? Because if we have XLOOKUP, that means we have dynamic arrays. So let's delete what I've just done and quickly repeat ourselves. What we should have done is XLOOKUP and the lookup value is all of the employee IDs, comma. Then it's back to how we were. Select the IDs, comma, select the emails. So specifying the column here, no column index number like VLOOKUP empty string to return, close bracket, enter, no need to copy that down, the dynamic array engine will spill to the bottom, absolutely awesome. We saw in the previous example that XLOOKUP defaults to the more common exact match, but sometimes you want to perform that range lookup. So in this example, we're looking for the totals in column B in a table called discounts and we want to return the discount that they have earned and that's dependent on what they've spent. So it's equals X lookup and the lookup value is the totals selecting the whole array. The lookup array is column E that first column of the discounts table called spent. Another comma asks for the return array, which is the discount column. Then what to do if it's not found? I'm going to put 0% as a discount. And one more comma brings us onto match mode. This is what we're here for. We don't want the exact match. We're looking at the exact match or next item smaller or next larger item. We also have an option for wild cards, which could be useful. Now in this example, we want the next item smaller. So we're going for that minus one option. No need for the final argument. We'll close bracket and press enter. That will spill to the bottom. And we have the discounts for each of those orders. Now, when you look at the discounts table, that first column, that spent column, is in ascending order. And from VLOOKUP, we know with range lookups that that must be the case. But 
we're not using VLOOKUP. We are using XLOOKUP. And in that function, it doesn't have to be the case. So if I was to select one of the rows and discounts and drag that into a different position, it does not affect the answer that XLOOKUP returns. I could grab this last one and drag it further up. Absolutely no effect. It is not dependent on the order of that first column. In this example, we want to create a ranking of the top five products by their sales. So in cell G3, I'm beginning with the large function. And the array is going to be the range of cells. And it's not a table this time. It is a range, which is B2 to B9. A comma will prompt for the kth value. And that is a reference to the index numbers in column E. The first largest, second largest, third largest, and so on. Close bracket and enter. We'll see that spill down to produce the top five values. But we are then going to use the XLOOKUP function to find out the name of those products. Now, the name of the product sits in a column to the left of the column of sales. And it's well known that VLOOKUP will struggle to look to the left. So we're going to get XLOOKUP to do this because it does not have those limitations. It's XLOOKUP time and the lookup value is the sales value. So I'm selecting these values in G, and we have the hashtag there to reference the spilled range. So even if it was to change this to the top 10 at some point, or the top eight, then this is going to still operate. It's going to spill and be dynamic. The lookup array, that is the range of sales. Comma, the return array is the product name. What if it's not found? I'm not going to worry about that or match mode or anything else needed. It will default to exact match. And we have our products and we have that top five list. Now, if the sales of carrot cakes was to change and instead of 52, it's suddenly going to be 126, which is the best sales value and quite rightly so, then the list on the right will change and carrot cake is now Number one, apple strudel moving down to number two position. Fully dynamic top five. X lookup function looking to the left. In this example, we have a table on the left of some training courses, the date they were delivered and how many students. We want to return in cell F2 the last date that a particular course was run. So in cell F2, in comes X lookup, and the lookup value is the name of the course in cell E2, a singular value this time. The lookup array, we're in a table, so I'll select the column of courses. The return array is the date. If not found, I'm going to return an empty string. And the match mode, I'm going to ignore. It is optional to get to this last argument, search mode. It will default to first to last, which is clearly the more popular one to use. But we want last to first, searching from the bottom upwards so that we get the last one. So I'm going to double click on that option. It will input minus one. We could have typed that, close bracket, press enter. I have the 16th of Feb 2020, and we can see that is true. Row 11 has the last Excel Advanced course that was run. So there is X lookup looking from the bottom upwards and is not limited to just top down searches. We are doing a two way lookup in this example. We need to look down column D to find the product, currently hot dogs. And then we need to look along the row, the headers, to find Southampton and return whatever value is at the intersection of that row and column. So in cell B2, X lookup. And let's start with the column. 
So the lookup value is hot dogs or A2. We're going to select the range of products for the lookup array, and it is a range this time. The return array is going to be all of the values, not one column, all four columns of values. And I won't worry about any if not found or any other argument. I'll close bracket on that short and swift X lookup. And that's going to return all of the values for hot dogs. But I get a spill error because I've got that lookup table in the way at the moment. If I was to select my table and move it out of the way, then those values will spill into those cells. And they are not what I want. But just to show you what has happened and also why I got that error. What we need to do, though, is look for Southampton in those range of values and bring back that 398 because that is the value representing Southampton. That's the fourth one. So I'm going to drag my lookup table back in place into XLOOKUP and let's write another XLOOKUP around it. There's only one thing better than XLOOKUP and that's two XLOOKUPs. Here we go. Lookup value is Southampton. Comma, lookup array is the array of places, E1 to H1 in this example. Comma, return array is the other X lookup, the one that's returning those values we just saw. Close bracket on the end of all of that, and now we have 398 representing hot dog sales in Southampton. If I was to change hot dogs to something else like burritos, 138. Change Southampton to Leicester, we have 402. So this is working two ways, looking down a column, but also along a row, just like a H lookup can. X lookup can look in both directions, and we've used both of them in one formula in this example. Multiple criteria. Surely XLOOKUP couldn't handle multiple criteria. Surely you'd need some kind of array for it. Well, we have dynamic arrays, don't we? If you've got XLOOKUP, you've got them. So we want to return the sales for the product, currently burritos, cell E2, the month, currently February. Two columns, two conditions, let's go. XLOOKUP, lookup value. I'm going to select the cell of burritos, put in an ampersand, and then select February. Both lookup values, that one and that one. Comma, lookup array. Going to repeat that process, but using the ranges. Select the range of products. We have a range here, no table. And the range for months. So same as we did with that lookup value, that range and that range. Comma, the return of range is singular column here for the sales. Comma, if nothing is found, I'll return a zero and none of the other arguments are required. We're looking top to bottom. We're doing an exact match. So close bracket, enter 203 for burritos in February. And if I change the burritos to chicken wings and February to January, we have 84. X lookup working on multiple criteria in its lookup. We have seen the X lookup function return an array of values. And we've seen X lookup being used with other functions, such as another X lookup but we can also use these array of values to feed other Excel features and functionality, such as a chart to make it interactive. I've got a location in cell B9, which is currently Leicester, and there's a drop down list there to choose something else. Got my products in column B, let's write an X lookup next to them, because I want to search for the value of B9, currently Leicester, in the lookup array, a longer row, kind of H lookup style. And the return array is going to be this whole range of values. 
So it doesn't return one, it's going to return all five for the place that it finds. I won't worry about any other arguments, close bracket and enter, and we have these values. I can now select that range and create a chart from them. And hey presto, I have a chart. We can then spend some time making this chart look amazing, but that's not really anything I'm going to dedicate a huge amount of time for in this video. But to take it a little bit further and more interactive and more dynamic, yes, we could change the place to Manchester and it will work. Change it to Southampton and it will work. But we could also build in other things. I could throw a sum function into a cell here and sum those values and look at that spilled reference because we've used XLOOKUP with that array engine. There's my sum. I could even then concatenate a title together and send, say equals the place that they chose and the words total hyphen close bracket ampersand the total press enter and then select my chart title and in there I can reference that cell and before long when I use my drop down list we now have this dynamic title as well when I choose Leicester I've got XLOOKUP returning the values and other functionality built in for a dynamic labeling as well and it doesn't take much when you've got functions like XLOOKUP to help out to build in features like this into your reports. This demonstration is a chart. It could easily be other formulas or other Excel features that you might use. With these new functions such as XLOOKUP, but also the functions like filter and sort, these incredible functions coming out in Excel now, we can really open our mind and see how they can help us out. So XLOOKUP is brilliant enough at its classic use, like our first example in this video, and how quick and easy and flexible it was to get off the ground. But the fact that we can build it into other things is great for those of us creating more advanced models or dynamic reporting. For this example, I'm building it in with another function. So I've got a subject French there across a row again. And once again, this is a range, it's not a table. The XLOOKUP function can be used to look for that subject along the header row and return once again all of the values. So when I close bracket, press enter, I get all of those values. And they're currently not formatted, so I've got some pretty horrible uh, looking decimals here. Now, I don't want all of those values, but the fact that that is what it's returned, that is what we can give to any other function that we may have a use for. So in this example, I want to know how many people passed. The pass mark is 65%. So in the XLOOKUP function, I'm going to put the count if function around it, which will prompt me for a range. And the answer to that is the range that XLOOKUP returns. So I'll go to the end of XLOOKUP, put a comma, build in my criteria of greater than or equal 65%. And as quick as that, I now have how many, which for French is four. But if I changed it to English, then four again. If I changed it to technology, only two passed. So this example saw XLOOKUP being used in conjunction with the COUNTIF function. It's the second time in these examples we've seen it used within another function, but there are so many Excel functions out there. It's just an idea to open up and think about the versatility that these functions offer us in whatever we might need them to do in our spreadsheets. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials and come check us out at computergargar.com.